Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the types of assets which you're going to need to actually find or create yourself in order for your Unity game project to take fruition. So for a 2D game specifically, you won't be using programs like Blender generally to create 3D models, but rather a sprite-based game is going to be using a series of images. That's what a sprite or sprite animation is. It's literally just an image you created, um, often in pixel art, uh, to basically represent your character or your enemies or their attacks inside of the game. Now, a character that's animated is going to have more than one sprite image. In fact, we call those a sprite sheet, where you will have maybe four, five, six images uh, that represent let's say your character walking or your character walking in different directions or maybe swinging its sword for an attack. So for instance, I'm going to drag one of my characters from my game Heart Battle onto the scene and we'll see that this character is in fact being rendered by a sprite renderer. So the sprite is the image itself and the sprite renderer is the component that allows basically that image to show in the game. So we see one image here and you can see that the way Unity basically dissects your sprite sheet, it takes each of the different images that are supposed to be one frame and gives it a number. So this is Penguin Iceland Battler Zero. But if we actually take a look at the PNG image itself, we have a sprite sheet that contains many different frames of animation for that character. Now when I click on the PNG in my project view, You'll see in the inspector that it gives us a series of settings. Now, these settings are basically metadata for how uh, Unity decides to import your PNG images into the scene. A PNG image is going to default as a sprite pretty much always, and it will say sprite mode single by default, but if you're working with a sprite sheet rather than a single image, you're going to want to change that from sprite mode single into multiple. The pixels per unit is talking about how many pixels of the PNG uh, sprite should represent one unit of space inside of your game. So that would be referring to these grids we talked about in the first video. One square in this grid is one unit space. So if you have a 64 pixel wide sprite, then theoretically if it takes up all the space, that should be two units wide. But Obviously, you can see that although these sprites were made using 64 pixels, they didn't quite take up 64 pixels. There's some transparency on the left and right. Now, this defaults to 100 pixels per unit, and it's fine if you want to work in Unity from that pixels per unit size, since that's the default anyway. Uh, but I changed it to 32 simply because uh, sprite games tend to work better when you're working in power of twos. And 32 pixels, therefore, was the unit size I wanted to go with for my game. Other important settings, if you're doing specifically a pixel art game and your sprites don't have a huge number of pixels on them to begin with, which pixel art generally doesn't, uh, the filter mode, it's going to be set to bilinear by default. And if I change it to bilinear, you'll notice that it actually updates the game object, the King Penguin, and it looks a lot blurrier. So generally, uh, the bilinear filter isn't a bad thing to have if your sprite is large enough to basically justify that because it kind of blurs things together with anti-aliasing. But for sprite-based games, I'm finding that point makes perfect sense here so that you get 100% accuracy and detail for all of the pixels that you drew in whichever image editor of choice you happen to have. Also, with the compression, uh, if you have a large image, it might make sense to use compression for your images, in which case you can set low, normal, or high quality. But once again, with a low resolution sprite sheet, compression actually ends up making it look pretty bad. So if I go here and we make it low quality, it's going to update and you'll see that there's a lot of defects as I change it from uncompressed to a compressed file. And that even applies up to high quality. But once again, if you're working with images that are massive in size, especially if it's more like vector art rather than sprite sheets, then it might make a lot of sense to use these tools. But for sprite games, I have both of these set to none. But for sprite games, I have filter mode set to point and compression set to none for pretty much all of my images. Now, as for how you take this sprite sheet and cut up the images, because you'll notice if I click on this expansion menu, all of these different images have been sliced into their own individual sprites for the game, although they all originate from one 
combined PNG image. And how we separate those is in the sprite editor. Once again, make sure that your sprite mode is set to multiple if you need to do this. So in the sprite mode editor, you can see all of these different locations on the sprite sheet have been made into their own sprite image. Uh, so in order to define what those regions are, you go up to slice uh, in the latest version of Unity, that's 5.6. You can choose automatic, which it'll automatically figure out basically where the sprites are and draw immediate boxes around it. Uh, note that the white space will be cut off. You can define cell size, which I believe I did here, which you just, you already know what the size of each frame is. So you just tell it, cut it up at every 64 pixels, 64 pixels, 64 pixels. Or you can do it by cell count, which is kind of similar. You know the exact number of sprites you have on each row. So you define it like, um, let's see, columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You would put seven there, slice, and it's going to slice those up. So whichever tool you want to use is going to be perfectly fine. As long as it's the right size, I'm just going to go ahead, hit apply, and we'll go back to that. So that's the basics of grabbing your sprite images as PNGs and making them work within Unity. Of course, you would take these sprites and you'd put them in the sprite renderer or your animations, but that's... Uh, another topic that we'll get into in future videos. Now the next very important thing for a 2D game or really any game in general is going to be audio and that means you're going to need WAV files, MP3s, um, and things of that nature. I'm not actually sure if .aug files work within Unity. They might. Um, so to look at all of my audio assets for the game I'm going to click over here, search by type, and just click on audio clip which basically recommend, uh, represents any audio source in your game and what these audio clips represent is anything that can be played as audio from an audio source within your game uh, you can see i have the name of some songs here and i also have a bunch of sound effects like explosion sounds launch sounds collision sounds how you name your uh, items is really up to you i would just say try to be consistent like all of my attacks in the game when they have a launch sound i call it underscore launch now you can see over here that you do have some settings that you can play around with inside of Unity, but I've actually never had to touch it once. Um, maybe you need to play with the quality rate or you need to decrease some of the settings specifically for other uh, formats like Android or iPhone to decrease your project size. I guess that's possible. Uh, but in general, you can just leave that alone as long as you import your .wave sound, so your .mp3 music for the game, keeping in mind all the licensing and copyright issues, uh, then you should be good to go. Now, one thing is how you would actually play one of these sounds within your scene. If I try to drag, let's say, this burst ring collision sound onto the screen, you can always test the sound effects in the inspector in the bottom right hand corner by clicking somewhere on the track and it will simply play from there. If you hit the, uh, the well the play changes to a stop, you can also hit this to play of course. Um, when you want it to stop, just hit the pause button. So here I'll go ahead and play the sound effect. But if we try to drag one of these audio clips to the scene, you'll notice that it doesn't directly just get placed on there like a game object prefab would. Instead, if you want to actually play an audio clip within your scene, within your game, you need to use something called an audio source. Now this can be added directly as a component, like many other things, like the animator or box colliders, which are for collision detection. So if I wanted to take this hero and basically add a clip to it, I would go add component and then audio, uh, audio source, and from that audio source, we can have that be responsible for playing sounds. So you drag the audio clip into the inspector, where it says audio clip, and that assigns the, the uh, basically the launch sound or the collision sound to the audio source, which will play specifically at the transform of that game object. So that's basically where the sound's coming from as well. You can see with audio source we have some other settings like loop and play on awake. So play on awake will mean that as soon as you start the game up or as soon as this object is enabled within your game, for the case of you changing scenes, it's going to play that sound. Usually you actually want that turned off unless it's music. And if it is music, you might want to have loop uh, enabled so that whenever the sound's finished or the music's finished, it'll keep playing until you turn it off in some other way.
Now, with some cool scripts that other people have come up with, it's actually possible to create audio sources on demand, and that's something we'll be talking about in the future. So you don't necessarily have to include it as a component for every sound that may be coming out of a character, but rather you can have those sounds play um, on demand by referencing a audio source creating script. But more advanced topic, we'll touch on that another time. Now one of the advantage of 2D games, sprite-based games, is that you don't going to need to mess with things like materials and meshes and how light plays off of everything. So it's more simplistic in its design, but also less uh, powerful in all of the effects you can get out of it. But in general, we have the advantage that, for the most part in this course, we're not going to need to touch on things like materials, meshes, textures, 3D models, or anything of that nature. So if, as long as you can get PNGs down for your backgrounds, for your characters and your sprites, and you can import all the sound effects and music you have for that, you actually have most of what you need to make your game already. Just needs quite a bit of scripting and uh, basically management inside of the inspector. So that's going to be it for this video on basically the assets you need for a 2D sprite based game inside of Unity. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future video content.